college football is a very, very violent sport. Hits like these lead to injuries. Injuries that last beyond a player's career in college where healthcare coverage does not. Take Stephen Threat, for example. He's a former quarterback for Michigan and Arizona State. He was forced into early retirement after the 2010 season after tallying somewhere around his 15th concussion. Stephen has symptoms that continue even today seven years after retiring. He says most players and the NCAA ignore the risk. They have the misinformation to kind of push the, the ignoring of the risk. The idea that helmets protect from concussions at all, no matter how advanced they are, is, is a fraud. You don't even have to be hit in the head to get a concussion. Any amount of velocity that makes the brain hit the skull is gonna be a TBI, traumatic brain injury, or, or you know, result in a concussion. Research into the brains of people involved with collision sports has revealed staggering and horrifying results. As these schools rake in cash, former players suffer in the dark. And believe me, these schools are raking in cash. The average D1 team makes $32 million for its school every year. That's more than the next 35 sports combined. But that means the players are worth a lot to these schools. In fact, the average player is worth $163,000. On the high end, the University of Texas's football players are worth $666,000 each. That means there's a lot of money the players aren't seeing. Of course, there are scholarships. The 130 Division I football teams are allowed 85 full rides. On top of that, some of the Power Five conferences even now offer stipend to players in the two to $4,000 range. But is that enough for players like Threet who have injuries, pain, and medical expenses after graduating? After all, these players are not provided healthcare the second they're off campus. So what's the biggest hurdle to things being changed? According to Threet, money, jobs. Why would the NCAA make these changes when they don't have to? Go to the point they need to, they think, to try and quiet the problem so that the business can keep operating because it's so cash flow positive. The argument of whether or not college athletes should be paid is not a new debate. However, when you see just how much they're worth in hard dollars, it's tough not to think about adding some sort of workman's compensation. As Threat says, If they're not going to offer the dollars uh, specifically to the football players would be the, the health care. You know, I know a lot of myself and a lot of other individuals included uh, suffer from ailments, injuries, pain that, you know, we received from bringing the benefit to these schools and the industry in itself. Uh, and then they're nowhere when your career is done. The reality of violence in college football and the aftermath is so stark that Threat offers this advice or warning to players considering playing Division I. It's hard for me because I wish I could still play, even knowing what I know now. But I would think anyone talented enough to play Division I football could find another sport where they would be more likely to uh, have positive impact on their future life. Should college athletes receive medical benefits after graduation? Let us know what you think in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe.